There are very few subjects that are more mysterious, more controversial, and more scientifically juicy than the origin of life. Abiogenesis, or the chemical means by which non-living matter generated into living systems, is a largely unknown and mysterious process. There's been a lot of experimental recreations of the early Earth that have attempted to simulate the environment for the origin of life. And while they've all shown us interesting details and revealing clues, the actual process of abiogenesis stubbornly remains in the shadows of the unknown. The Miller-Urey experiment, for example, is rather old and rudimentary by today's standards, but it's iconic because it was one of the first of these experiments that showed that the simple environmental interactions of the sky and the oceans and the lightning fueled by heavy volcanic activity could quickly generate a thick, crimson sludge of simple organic molecules. Now recently, there's been a new study on the cutting edge of the scientific field that's taken into consideration a much wider range of factors than virtually any previous study on the origin of life. The researchers behind this newest study identified certain hydrogen cyanide reactions with water as the potential origin of amino acids and nucleic acids, which could then be made into more complex proteins and RNA and potentially DNA. There are several reasons why this pathway is more plausible, and for that reason more exciting, from an advancing our understanding perspective. One of these reasons is that hydrogen cyanide is quite common throughout the cosmos, bringing together carbon, nitrogen, and hydrogen, which are the key ingredients for a lot of amino and nucleic acids. Although oxygen is also important, and this is where water comes in, as a watery solution is ideal for these biochemical reactions and provides the oxygen atoms and some spare hydrogen atoms that, uh, that are also used in amino and nucleic acids. Things that are also used include trace elements like sulfur that would be found on the ocean floor, washed up on a beach or a seabed or billowed out into the ocean through a deep sea hydrothermal vent. Another reason why this research is important is because the proposed reactions are not energetically expensive. From the perspective of the energy flow that propagates a chemical reaction, these water-hydrogen cyanide reactions are more affordable than the reactions proposed in earlier studies on the origin of life. Now this in particular is a critically important detail. I mean, this is a really big reason as the energy potential of certain reactions, how the chemical compounds interact in favorable ways that make their reactions more frequent or faster, well, that's the fundamental motivator behind all of biochemistry. Like water flowing down a hill along the path of least resistance, chemicals will engage in energetically favorable reactions and the proposed hydrogen cyanide reactions in water are relatively low energy, and thus highly probable. It's quite probable for these to happen spontaneously and rapidly. I'm going to quote the researchers here, and uh, when they mention the AINR, what they're talking about is a powerful nanoreactor device that's used in computational chemistry. Okay, so the researchers say, quote, Gratifyingly, not only do the results from the AINR approach show that aqueous hydrogen cyanide could indeed have been the source of RNA and protein precursors, but they also indicate that just the interaction of hydrogen cyanide with water would have sufficed to begin a series of reactions leading to the precursors. The current work therefore provides important missing links in the story of prebiotic chemistry and it charts the road from aqueous hydrogen cyanide to the precursors of RNA and proteins." Unquote. So this is really cool. This is, I think this is awesome. This is a groundbreaking new take on the origin of life. It's also interesting to consider the implications for alien life. If liquid water and hydrogen cyanide are all you need to start the reactions that generate life, well, these ingredients might be common out there, and they are common out there in the cosmos. 
And so if every planet with liquid water and warm temperate sunlight shining down on it is able to naturally undergo these chemical processes of uh, hydrogen cyanide reactions in the watery oceans, and this eventually leads to amino acids and nucleic acids, and this eventually leads to proteins and genetic material, then it almost seems like a naturalistic, determined process. That if you have a, a temperate planet with liquid water, just by sheer circumstance, it's going to have enough hydrogen cyanide to engage in these early prebiotic reactions. And this will inevitably, inexorably, lead to the eventual genesis of living systems. What this means is that virtually every alien ocean on every alien planet could inevitably become a home to some kind of alien life.